Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Anthony Brass and I'm going to bring you guys a little educational entertainment today while we're all stuck at home. Um, we're going to be using acrylic paint. So if you have never painted before, I'm sure you've finger painted before or you've done some sort of painting. That kind of counts. But we're going to be using acrylic paint today. Um, I typically use Utrecht um, Studio Series paint, but for today's lesson we're going to use acrylic, acrylic paint, just like that. And um, you could really use any kind of acrylic paint you have at home. Um, uh, you can go any kind of paint. Even if you have oil paints, you can use that. But typically, acrylic paint is really easy to work with, I find. And what we're going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to teach you guys step by step how to paint this lovely pink skied nature landscape. It's kind of a silhouette of some pine trees. I created it the other day while I was at home like all of us are, and I had nothing to do. And I figured we could, I could paint something and give you guys some entertainment. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off, and we're just gonna use three colors. So if you don't have a lot of paint, or if you, you're limited on paint, this is fine, this is good for you, because all we're using is black, white, and a color of your choice. I'm gonna use red, because I'm gonna make pink. But you can pick any color that's your favorite color. Say you love blue, all you're going to need is blue, and we're going to mix it with the white, and it'll make a little baby blue color. So, pick your favorite color and put it alongside the black and white. And we're just going to take our biggest brush, okay? So it's a big brush. And I'll warn you guys, if you guys get some paint on your clothes, don't worry, it's fine. Acrylic paint is easy to get off if, as long as you get it before it dries. So say if I get a little paint on my shirt, just pause the video, Run to your sink and get some soap and water and just wipe it off and you'll be fine. So we're just going to dive right into this one. I'm going to take red. I'm going to mix it with my white. Just like that. I'm going to get a nice light pink. So you want to mix it until you get the color you want and the shade of the color you want. And I want a light pink. So that's what I'm going for. We're going to make it a little more lighter. And then what I'm going to do with my big, the biggest brush I have, I'm going to go from right to left. Just like that, I'm going to do long, horizontal, east to west brush strokes. Okay? We're not going to go all crazy, ooh, all crazy like that. We're not going to do that. We're going to just do long, straight, horizontal strokes. Just like that. And once I get about a little past halfway from the canvas, I'm going to start adding a little more of the color I'm using. Just a little more. So it's going to get a little darker. And we want like a tiny bit of a gradient. And this is just going to show the sun maybe rising or setting, whatever way you like it. So I'm going to add a little more. And I'm going to continue down bit, almost to the bottom, about like two inches from the bottom of the canvas. That's where I'm going to bring the paint to, just like that. Just like that. I find it good while we're all stuck at home, I find it nice to try to spin this in a positive way and, and learn something new or try a new activity like painting. So thanks for coming and joining me today. Hope you guys enjoy it. 
This is my first little lesson, maybe of many, we'll see. So once I get that color kind of filled where I want it, and you want to leave a little bit of white space down below, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my brush, I'm, not, I'm just going to make sure there's no glob of paint on it, I'm just going to wipe it off to make sure that that's not the case. And I'm going to take my brush and I'm just going to go ahead and brush over the whole entire sky. <clears throat> and what this is going to do, this is going to smooth out the sky. It's going to make it a little less um, aggressive. And it's going to make the sky look a little more subtle and serene and calm. I hope this painting's bringing calmness to you guys, letting you guys forget about the rest of everything. Just kind of focus on something creative. <clears throat> okay, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to take the solid color of what you choose, chose. Like, say so you chose blue or whatever. I'm going to choose, I'm going to pick my red <laughs> and then I'm going to take a point. I'm going to follow. You know what? We're not going to do that. So I hope you didn't do that part yet. What we're going to do actually is we're going to take black. We're going to take black. I'm going to go ahead. And if you did that, by the way, it's not a big deal. It's going to make sense as we get further into the painting. So I'm going to take black. I'm going to paint the bottom where that white canvas is showing through. I'm just going to paint that just like so. And we'll fill it. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the horizon line. This is going to be um, where, where that, this little hill is going to start, where the trees are kind of perched off on. So this this way you can get creative and make your little hill, landscape, whatever kind of shape you want it to be. Mine is just going to be like this. I'm not thinking too hard about it. I'm just kind of creating. Whatever comes out is going to come out. And you know, all our paintings are going to look different. My painting is going to look different from the one I did earlier. And your paintings are going to look different than mine. <clears throat> That's the fun part about painting is it's so unique and um, individual. Okay, once I do that, I got my horizon line, okay? Then we're going to take our brush. I'm going to set my palette down. Actually, no, we're going to take this brush and we're going to put it in the water. And this is going to be, a, you got to make sure you get a water cup. This is what I drink out of every morning. I'm just kidding. This is just a big paint water uh, container <laughs> that I, I grab and I just use it when I paint large paintings or murals with big brushes. So you just want to fill it up with water and you want to leave your brush in the container while you're not using it. And that way the acrylic paint doesn't dry, harden, and then destroy your brush. Okay? Next step is I'm going to take another brush. This brush, you could use the same brush. Um, just make sure you clean it. Uh, but if you have another brush, I'm going to use the square brush right here. You guys see? Um, it's like a medium square brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take red this time. Okay? So this is the step that I kind of faked you guys out on, but we're going to actually do it this time. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a little bit of red, just like so. And I'm going to kind of hover above the horizon line just maybe about a half inch, and I'm going to take my brush, I'm going to kind of flick upward. So I'm going to take the paint, put a lot of pressure on the canvas, and then release it and flick it up. And you see how I get those, like, they kind of look like hairs. And if you get a little bit of that black, don't worry, just wipe that brush off on a paper towel or a paint cloth you have. And then I'm going to do that really, um, unrestrictedly and unstrategically paint along the horizon line. Well, I guess you could be strategic about it, but don't be too regimented about it. You don't want all the, all the lines to look the same. You want them to have a little variety. So you want a few to go up a little bit, a few to be a little shorter than others. And you're going to just go ahead and um, paint that right there. And this is going to be like some 
some grass and foliage in the far in the background where the light is shining through and hitting it and making it glow a red color. And what we're going to do next is we're going to just do that right there. What we're going to do next is we're going to take our brush and then we're going to clean it. So the way I'm going to clean it is I'm going to take it I'm going to brush the bottom of my water cup, okay? And then I'm going to press the bristles up against the side wall of the cup, and that's going to kind of squeegee out all the water, extra water from the brush, so it's not as wet. And then we're going to take our, our rag or our paper towel or whatever we have, and we're just going to clean it off just a little bit. It doesn't need to be like squeaky clean. Uh, you're not being judged on this, guys. Uh, you just want to clean it a little bit. Okay. And if you're anything like me, you're going to get paint all over yourself. So when you're done with this, go in the mirror and check. Make sure you don't have paint on your face before uh, you head out. Or wait, we can't head out. So, But <laughs> just make sure that you don't get paint all over yourself. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this brush. And if you... I'm just going to show you two ways, because if you, if you don't have a smaller brush than this, because what I'm going to suggest to use is using a small brush, just like that. But if you don't have a small brush, you want to use the same brush, as long as it's a flat one. And you could make a thin line, just like this. So I'm going to get a little water, a little water from my water cup, and I'm going to mix it in with the black paint, just to loosen it up a little bit, so it rides on that canvas a little better. I'm going to take my brush and instead of using brush strokes with all the bristles, I'm going to turn it around and just use a few of them. And that way I can get a thin stroke. And look at the, the heavier I push down on the canvas, the thicker the stroke. So we're going to start off with a nice heavy brush stroke. I'm going to go ahead and get more paint. A nice heavy brush stroke. And then as I get higher, I'm going to lighten up a little bit and the brush stroke is going to get a little bit thinner, just like that. And we're going to do we're gonna add a little like a little sticky guy hanging out from the left. And I'm gonna put this brush away and I'm gonna get my other brush. I almost lost it, but I put it in my pocket. I'm gonna get this one. So if you have a small brush, I would say go ahead and grab that. Get it wet a little bit. Mix it with the black, okay? Just like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another sticky guy right in the middle. And I'm gonna push really hard. I mean, not too hard where you're going to break through the canvas, but just a little bit. Just add a little more pressure, and then as you get higher, you want to lighten up. And look at I'm, I'm just, you don't have to make your, your sticky guy the same as mine. You want to just be free and just let this thing, this line do its own thing, okay? This one's going to have two, just like that. And you know what? I'm going to add another one on the top right here. So it's going to be like... Little wise hanging out. Your upside down stick figures with long torsos. Okay, so next we're gonna do one more guy. Okay, this guy's gonna be hanging off to the right and he's gonna kind of swoop up. He's gonna start like this and I'm gonna bring him up just like this. You know what? Let's get a little more water. If it starts to kind of like do that where it's a the paint breaks up, just add more paint and water to your brush. But you don't want to have so much water where it's like dripping down. If it starts to drip, you know you're, you've done it, you've done it, you've done it too much. And then, just like that, we'll swoop them up, we'll do another swoopy dee doo right there. And every time you do one of these strokes, you gotta say swoop. And then you gotta go swoop. So that way, you're able to transmit your vocal cords through your body into your hand and then onto the canvas and you get the, the best swoop you could possibly imagine. I'm just kidding, don't do that. I mean, you can if you want, it's fine. Uh, okay, so what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and add a bunch of little swoops. And these are going to be branches, if you um, can imagine. 
It looks kind of funny right now, like a desolate tree that's in an unfinished dying landscape, but we're gonna we're gonna liven it up in a few. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add branches wherever I feel fit. And you just want these branches to kind of, all my branches are kind of like going up just a little bit and then they flatten off and trail off to the right or the left, okay? So we're gonna kind of just keep that in mind and some of them are even gonna go and swoop down. Like these guys in the bottom, I'm gonna have them swoop down. Maybe they got a little heavy because they have so many leaves on one branch that's, that's weighing the, the branch down. Whoa. And then this guy, you know what? We're gonna give him a few friends. So I'm gonna give him another little guy to hang out with. This is Steve and this is Louie and they're uh, best friends. They've been growing together since uh, 50 years ago. We're gonna do another one here. And then what we're gonna do to all these is we're gonna add some more branches. Remember guys, whoop. It's important. Um, we'll do another one right here, and we'll do one right here. That guy's gonna go to the ground. He's just like, I don't know, he just wants to go on the ground. That's his thing. All right, so we've done that. We're done, nope, we're almost done. I'm gonna take this brush, I'm gonna put it away. And you remember that uh, square brush we were using? I'm gonna take that brush out if you have it. Actually, no, I'm gonna do, you can take that brush out if you have that, or if you have a brush, if you have an arsenal of brushes and you have one that kind of looks like this, it's like rounded at the top and it's kind of flat, I would suggest to grab that one. And if not, you can use um, any kind of flat brush or really any brush you have, because I know everyone doesn't have supplies at home, but we'll, we'll work with what we have. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to take black, okay? I'm going to take black and we're going to add some leaves, some foliage to these trees and make them alive. It's springtime, right? So we're going we're gonna to make it spring in our little imaginary world. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and just kind of like I did these little red hairs on the bottom, <clears throat> I'm going to put my brush on the canvas, put apply a lot of pressure, and then release it really quickly, and kind of flick upwards, and we're gonna make little hairs, little eyelashes. Okay? We're gonna make these trees look fleek. These trees are gonna be on fleek, as people say. Oh, girl, your tree's on fleek. That's what people are gonna say when they see your painting. Okay, we're just going to fill in wherever we think um, some branches or some leaves should be on the branches. And we're just going to go ahead and fill in all these branches with um, lovely leaves. You guys are doing great. If you made it this far in the video, you guys are the trees and leaves. You're kicking butt. You know what, we'll add a little here too. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same to this middle guy. This is Stephanie here. She likes long, sunny summer days and she likes to drink water on her free time. What if trees had names? And they talk to you, and they'd be kind of crazy. What if they do, and we just don't know? All right, so I'm gonna add some more leaves over here. Uh, here. 
And remember, we're just going to add a lot of pressure, apply a lot of pressure, and then release really quickly. And flick up at the same time. And be really loose with this. Another key is to not be um, extremely repetitive and uh, you want to be like you want to have a lot of variety in your brush strokes. So you don't want it to be really regimented. You don't want it to look like each brush stroke's the same. And the way you do that is you you loosen up. You don't think about it as much, and you just kind of change and just let let your hand do all the talking. Okay, we're gonna go ahead. And we're gonna add some more branches to this guy, Steve, I think I called him. I think that's his name. We're gonna add some, some furry leaves to this guy. So speaking about naming things, you guys can comment below and tell me the name of the painting you created or what you would call this painting. Um, I would love to hear what you guys come up with. Naming artworks uh, could be difficult, but I'm sure you guys can come up with some cool creative names. Also, if you know anybody that um, could benefit from an art class or someone that's out of school and is, is not um, getting, they're missing out on art class at school, or they're just bored at home, or they play too many video games or watch too much TV and you think they should um, do something a little more productive, uh, tag them or share this video with them in um, the comments below. and Maybe they'll um, thank you for it. done guys. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this brush, the same one, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, but this time we're going to add a little bit of foliage to the bottom. So the bottom looks a little more full, lively, and a little more natural. And the way I'm going to do that is sometimes I'm going to go up a little bit. Maybe there's a brush or a bush right here, a brushy bush. We're going to go ahead and just kind of add some of those eyelashes and foliage on the bottom, just like that. So now it's really filling up. Looks like a dense little meadow with some, a couple of cool trees hanging out. This just looks like a place where it looks nice, and then if you want to like sit under the tree, you can't because there's all these really um, sharp pine needles all over the ground. Or if you're walking barefoot and you're just like, ah, you get stabbed by the pine needles. But it's a very pretty place we've, we've made. All right. Um, that's it. If you guys have any questions, you can leave a comment below or message me. Um, and I hope you guys' painting came out great. This is how mine came out. And um, so it's not exactly like the original, but it's close. And um, again, my name is Anthony Brass. And if you would like to see my artwork, uh, you can visit my website, anthonyrbrass.com. Or you can contact me and I do painting lessons um, for my business that I, it's called Artists on Court. Um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy your day and maybe I'll do another video shortly and we can paint something different. Alright, you guys have a good one.